Toronto Raptors are headed to their first NBA Finals. The entire offense of the Milwaukee Bucks appears to have been neutralized. I remember somebody talking about how Giannis was going to dunk his way through the playoffs and yada, yada, yada. Listen. This man is right now, he's the most overrated in basketball. Look, for the second straight year, they have the best record in the NBA, and for the second straight year, they're not going to the NBA Finals. NBA executive anonymously told The Athletic he predicts Giannis might be headed to Miami in free agency. The Milwaukee Bucks are NBA champions once again. Since 2021, life hasn't been easy for the Milwaukee Bucks. After reaching the top of the world and winning the championship, they've collapsed into a spell of unluckiness. In the last three years, they've suffered a second round exit and two straight first round outs. Their roster has gone from championship worthy to old and injury prone. There's very little cap flexibility, barely any young talent, and no valuable trade pieces. Their front office has been backed into a corner with seemingly no way out, and to make matters worse, Doc Rivers is their head coach. So how did all of this happen? How did the Bucks crumble so hard after their 2021 championship? Well, it's because they weren't supposed to win this ring in the first place. 99 times out of 100, this team loses in the second round against the Brooklyn Nets. So what happened? What happened was that the Bucks made a deal with the devil. A valuable championship would be given to them in exchange for a curse that would overshadow their franchise indefinitely. It's an offering that many fans would undoubtedly take for their favorite sports teams. After all, a ring is the most prized achievement in all of sports. But not all rings have equal value. And when you have a player as generational and talented as Giannis Antetokounmpo, one would expect a team to be more competitive than what we've seen from the Bucks since their championship. It's as if the franchise sold their soul for a chip, and ever since then, they've been paying the price. Front office mismanagement, shockingly incredible performances from their opponents, and unlucky injuries have all handicapped the Bucks since their ring. Today, we'll be investigating how the Milwaukee Bucks became cursed thanks to a deal completed with the basketball devil. It's impossible to appreciate the significance of the Bucks winning their first ring without first understanding the key events that preceded it. In the years before 2021, Milwaukee's high expectations were always met with crushing playoff exits, often leaving their fan base in misery. Despite having a superstar MVP level player in Giannis Antetokounmpo, this team, for whatever reason, could not execute when the lights shine brightest. It wasn't until the 2018-19 season, five years after first drafting Giannis, that the Bucks finally made the leap from mediocre to a contender. This was partly because the roster surrounding Giannis was better than ever, with solid pieces like Chris Middleton, Brooke Lopez, Eric Bledsoe, and Malcolm Brogdon all fitting in well. But what really helped this team win 60 games, the most in five decades, was the leap from the Greek freak and the new head coaching addition in Mike Budenholzer. In the blink of an eye, Giannis went from a rising all-star to a guy who won the MVP. Mike Budenholzer had much to do with that jump. The freshly hired coach helped the Bucks develop a new dynamic offense centered around the Greek freak that relied on ball movement and three-point shooting. With this many dubs and so much success, high hopes followed. A team that was a first round out just one year prior was now widely projected to make a finals run at the very worst. Through the first two rounds of the 2019 playoffs, the Bucks proved all their believers right. They steamrolled past the mediocre Detroit Pistons in four, and then, to the surprise of many, easily dismantled the Boston Celtics in five. They made quick work of their opponents, setting up a much-anticipated date with the Toronto Raptors in the Eastern Conference Finals. Many in Milwaukee saw this Raptors team and side-eyed them. Fans relished the opportunity to destroy these miracle merchants and secure their ticket to the finals. But unfortunately for the Cheeseheads, this was the year of Kawhi Leonard, not Giannis Antetokounmpo. And for Giannis, this series would be his greatest nightmare come to life. In the Eastern Conference Finals, the Raptors crushed the Bucks' spirit in a 4-2 series victory. After jumping out to a 2-0 lead, Milwaukee collapsed in brutal fashion, dropping four straight games. Giannis's MVP breakout season, which was expected to end with him lifting the Larry O'Brien trophy, instead ended with him being posterized by Kawhi Leonard in front of a rowdy Raptors crowd. He, and the rest of his team, had been thoroughly outplayed and locked up. Anticlimactic couldn't even begin to describe it. 60 wins, but a blown 2-0 lead. 
a team touted as having elite depth, only for it to wither away in the playoffs. A Giannis MVP, but a poor showing in the biggest series of his career. And even worse was that many in Wisconsin feared the young power forward was a ticking time bomb. This was because in the summer of 2021, just two years from this point, Giannis was set to be an unrestricted free agent. With each playoff loss that mounted, fans grew more and more worried that the Greek freak would start to look at other destinations to join. The 2019 offseason saw the Bucks lose a few solid pieces, but all in all, they were still relatively the same squad once the 2019-20 season began. In this year, the Bucks were completely dominant, going 53-12 through the first 65 games of the season. They were putting together one of the greatest regular seasons in NBA history, with Giannis playing so well that he acquired yet another MVP. But once the season was shut down and resumed a few months later, this group deteriorated into a shell of their former selves in the bubble. They went from overpowering their opponents to playing down to their competition, getting destroyed by the Miami Heat in round two of the playoffs in the gentleman's sweep. Giannis failed to show up again, finishing with disappointing numbers in a series where many expected him to prove he was the best player in the world. The Bucks were mercilessly mocked on social media and in the sports world. This was supposed to be their shining moment, but instead, a second straight playoff failure had hit Milwaukee, this one being far worse than the last. And now, all eyes were focusing on Giannis's contract situation. Would he accept the contract extension from the Bucks already on the table, or would he play the year out and search for greener pastures in the summer of 2021? The Bucks, who were urgently trying to keep their greatest player in franchise history, frantically put together a trade in an attempt to please him. They acquired Drew Holiday from the Pelicans, forking over nearly all their future first-round picks. As it turns out, not only did this satisfy Giannis, but it was a key move that pushed the Bucks to win their championship. This along with signing Bobby Portis made Giannis quite happy, so he re-upped on a deal right before the new season started. Yay! A crisis had been averted! Well, that may in fact have been the case, but still, there was tons of pressure continuing to mount on both Giannis and the Bucks organization. If they failed yet again, Milwaukee would have no way to try and reconstruct their team. All their assets were gone. A finals appearance was an absolute must, and all hell would break loose if they fell short of that goal. Fast forward to the playoffs, and things had gone quite smoothly for the third-seeded Bucks. They had just wrapped up another successful regular season, finishing comfortably at the third seed. But playing them in round one was a familiar face that was looking to spoil their party once more. That team being the Miami Heat. Oh god, these guys again? As one can imagine, many Bucks fans were horrified that these annoying Heatles would somehow embarrass them once more. And four quarters through game one, that fear seemed to be coming true, as the mediocre 41 Heat were fighting tooth and nail with the heavily favored Bucks all the way into the closing minutes. Then, in the final seconds with Miami down by two, Jimmy Butler swooped past the Bucks defense and finished a tough layup to tie the game and send it to OT. It was gonna happen again, wasn't it? Oh man, if the Bucks lost this game, momentum would be overwhelmingly in the Heat's favor, and they'd have a real chance of winning the series. If that happened, the Bucks would have had to tear the whole team down, and they'd be the biggest laughingstocks of the league. Milwaukee feared the worst, so in an act of desperation, they called the basketball devil, and the two soon made a deal. The Bucks would receive the 2021 championship, in exchange for a curse that would be placed on their franchise. For the Bucks, it seemed like a fair exchange at the time. They absolutely could not afford to lose in the playoffs this year, let alone in round one to the Miami freaking Heat. The aforementioned curse? Ah well, the Bucks felt some curse would be worth the incredible thrill of winning it all. Just like that, the deal had been signed and made official. It was time for the Bucks to ride high. Overtime went about as well as you'd expect. Chris Middleton hit an impossible game-winning shot to break the Heat's heart. Many credit this clutch bucket as the one that ignited the Bucks' iconic playoff run. The rest of the series went so smoothly for the Bucks that many even forgot Game 1 was so competitive to begin with. Milwaukee destroyed the Heat in all three of the next games, sweeping them in an overwhelming fashion. The Heat, once viewed as an intimidating opponent, crumbled at the hands of Cream City. Milwaukee was off to round two, but their opponent they'd be facing was perhaps one of the greatest teams ever assembled. The Brooklyn Nets had just finished humiliating the Boston Celtics in their opening round series. With a big three of James Harden, Kevin Durant, and Kyrie Irving, many viewed this squad as the undeniably best team in the league. 
The basketball devil, in order to live up to his side of the bargain, had to make some changes to the Nets lineup in order to help Milwaukee. So just 20 seconds into game one, James Harden suffered a grade two hamstring strain on a routine drive to the basket. The best player for the Nets during their round one series was gone just like that. But unfortunately for the Bucks, the Nets even without Harden would still put the hammer down on Milwaukee. Games one and two were crushing blowouts. The Nets demolished the Bucks at home with little resistance. In game three, the Bucks managed to win but it was hardly convincing at all. They shot just 38% from the floor, scoring 86 points, and winning by just the skin of their teeth with the Drew Holiday clutch layup. The Bucks needed more help here. Another valued player of the Nets needed to go down. So in the second quarter of Game 4, the magic wand from the basketball devil was waved, and it was Kyrie Irving who suffered a brutal ankle injury that ended his season. The Bucks' eyes lit up. This was their chance. Look, we played game one, they beat us. I'm like, ah, you know, game one is a test game. Everybody mm. like, yeah, you got to figure each other out. Game two, they beat us by 30-something. <laughs> I went to the locker room, and you talk about packing up. <laughs> Kyrie sprained that ankle. You see the energy on our team, like, oh, sh <laughs> like, <laughs> this might be our chance. But before going into what happened next, a word from today's sponsors. Factor is a meal service company that sends never frozen, gourmet meals right to your doorstep. These guys have it all, with 35 different meals and more than 60 add-ons to choose from every week. They have keto meals, vegan options, calorie smart meals, seafood options, and so much more that can all be easily delivered right to your doorstep. I tried the mushroom tomato and cheese pasta, and it hit different, man. All I had to do was heat it up for two minutes, and I had restaurant quality food. Factor helps you save time on grocery shopping and meal prep, delivering you nutritious meals with diverse options to choose from. So what are you waiting for? Head to factor75.com or click the link below and use code DylanBball50 to get 50% off your first Factor box and 20% off your next month of orders. That's code DylanBball50 at factor75.com to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next month of orders. Now where were we? The Bucks soon pulled away in Game 4, taking full advantage of the corpse of Brooklyn with their home crowd cheering them on. But even with Kyrie and Harden out, the Bucks struggled to defeat this net squad. They dropped Game 5 because Kevin Durant went nuclear and faced the brink of elimination. However, the Bucks woke up and bounced back, winning Game 6 and narrowly eliminating Brooklyn in Game 7 thanks to an overtime victory. Never mind the fact that Kyrie and Harden were hurt. Never mind the fact that Kevin Durant's foot was just one inch away from sending this team home. A win is a win, baby, and this Buck squad was on to the next round. Against the Atlanta Hawks in the Eastern Conference Finals, the Bucks were favored to advance. But immediately, it became clear that the Hawks, who were on a Cinderella-type run, were not to be messed with. These two split the first two. Then in Game 3, Atlanta was leading for most of the game and appeared to be well on their way to taking a 2-1 advantage. The basketball devil saw this and rolled his eyes. It was time to give the Bucks another break. Rather than going after the second or third option, the devil instead targeted the top dog, striking star point guard Trey Young. Young, who was responsible for a 48-point outing in Game 1 and who had 32 points through three quarters in Game 3 suffered a ridiculously unlucky ankle injury. He accidentally stepped on a ref's foot, bruising a bone in his right ankle, which would essentially sideline him for the rest of the series. The Bucks had caught another stroke of good luck, and they took full advantage of this injury, winning Game 3. But this time, they'd have to pay a price for their good fortune. See, even the evil basketball devil likes a bit of parody in his sports. And what was happening to the Bucks was nonstop blessing after blessing in the form of their opponent's best players getting hurt. Rather than continuing down this path for the rest of the playoffs, the deity and his good pal Adam Silver conscripted a plan to spice things up. Why not injure Giannis, the superstar himself, to make things more interesting? It wouldn't be an injury that would end his season, but it would be one that severely hindered his abilities. So that's exactly what happened. In Game 4, Giannis suffered a knee hyperextension. It was a devastating injury, and it led to the Bucks getting blown out. The series was now tied at 2. To the surprise of many though, rather than giving up, the Bucks showed a championship mentality. 
They won both games 5 and 6, thanks to the entire team stepping up in place of Giannis. The Bucks went from losing because players outside Giannis couldn't step up, to winning because players stepped up when he was gone. As we all know, the finals went perfectly for this team. In Giannis' stunning return, the Bucks overcame a 2-0 deficit to the Phoenix Suns, winning four straight games to clinch the series. Ante Dekumpo heroically proved himself as the best player in the league, winning finals MVP and scoring 50 in the closeout game 6. The Bucks were champions, their first since 1971. Congratulations, Milwaukee. The basketball devil has granted you your wish of ultimate success. Enjoy it. Savor it. Drink it in. Good? Good. Now it's time for you to pay up. The curse was officially in full effect, and it would first rear its ugly head in the season following this ring. Entering the 2021-22 season, the Bucks had high expectations of repeating. Now with some championship experience under their belt, there was no reason why this talented roster couldn't replicate it and win one, maybe even a few more. They won 51 games, earning the third seed, with the Greek Freak producing another top-of-the-line MVP campaign. He was stellar, scoring a career-high 30 points per game with elite defense. And boy, did he make people hype. He had just won it all and played incredibly with a messed up knee in the finals. Now imagine how good he'd be if he was 100%. As a result of this excitement, the Bucks were predicted to win the Eastern Conference by dozens of NBA analysts. But rather than living out this dream scenario, the devil came knocking on their door. The Bucks had to pay up for their past deal. In Game 2 of their first round series versus the Chicago Bulls, the sidekick to Giannis, Chris Middleton, suffered a season-ending MCL sprain. The second best player on the Bucks was gone thanks to a slippery court, and this completely sabotaged the Bucks' title hopes. Or did it? Because against the Celtics in Round 2, Milwaukee actually played well, even taking a 3-2 lead thanks to a miracle Game 5 win. Holy smokes, were they seriously gonna do it? Hold on, don't you remember that deal you made, Milwaukee? It ain't gonna happen. In Game 6, Jason Tatum had the best game of his career, erupting for 46 points on the road to keep the Celtics alive. Then in a do-or-die Game 7, it was Grant Williams, a role player who turned into a superstar. He also had the greatest game of his career, scoring 27 points with a mind-boggling 7 three-pointers. The Bucks got blown out, their season was over, and their hearts were ripped from their chest. They just couldn't match the firepower of Boston, and they couldn't beat the basketball devil. But this was only the beginning of their curse. The Bucks' 2022-23 season was their most successful one in years. They won 58 games, earning the number one seed, receiving stellar output from their top players. Now listen, 58 dubs may seem like a lot, but in reality, this season was full of ups and downs. The Bucks started 9-0, but then went 20-17 in their next 37 games. They went on a 16-game winning streak against average competition, but then finished the year 13-7. Either way, championship hopes swept the city of Milwaukee once more. The quest to ring number 2 in the Giannis era began in round 1 against the Heat, but rather than stomping Miami like they did in 2021, the Bucks instead had a complete meltdown. They lost the series in just five games, with the reason for that being an injury to the Greek Freak. Just eight minutes into the opening game one, Giannis drove to the rim and took a hard fall on his back. It was a catastrophic injury that sidelined him for two games, and when he came back, it was clear that he wasn't the same. Rather than a second or third fiddle player being chosen, the basketball devil instead ruthlessly went for the main prize, and this killed Milwaukee. They quickly fell down to one to the heat, and proceeded to get eviscerated by Jimmy Butler in games 4 and 5 to drop the series. A number 1 seed had just been eliminated at the hands of the 8th seed, the first time such an event had happened in 11 years. It was a shocking ending to the Bucks season. No ring, no finals appearance, not even a semi-finals trip. This failure sent the Bucks management into a panic mode, a feeling that was quite undeserved in actuality. They hadn't lost in the last two years because of their lack of talent, no. They had lost because of injuries, but the Bucks front office's mind had been poisoned by the basketball devil. They weren't thinking rationally anymore. They hyper fixated on acquiring a superstar, despite not really needing one, and impulsively searched the trade market. Enter Damian Lillard. 
Lillard was widely viewed as one of the best point guards in the game, and he was seen as the perfect peanut butter to Giannis's jelly. The price? A handful of first rounders, Grayson Allen and Drew Holiday, the guard who had just played a vital role in the Bucks 2021 championship. Steep but to the Bucks' management, it appeared worth it. The Bucks had just put together one of the greatest duos in NBA history. Try your best, basketball devil, but you can't stop destiny. Well, as it turns out, the devil didn't even have to try and destroy this team, because they just ended up destroying themselves. The 2023-24 Bucks were a train wreck from the very beginning. Their collapse against the Heat a year prior led to the firing of their coach and Mike Budenholzer. His replacement was Adrian Griffin, a longtime assistant coach, which ended up being an awful hiring, especially considering top coach Nick Nurse was available on the market. But Giannis insisted that he wanted Griffin, not Nurse, and the Bucks felt they had no choice but to please him. A cruel twist of events. Giannis was doing the devil's job for him. The Bucks opened the year 24-8, but man was this record deceiving. They looked the least bit impressive in each and every W, often struggling to fend off vastly inferior opponents. Their defense, which had been known for its dominance in years past, was awful, leaving many pointing fingers at the head coach. Adrian Griffin never rallied the team around him, and after a series of disappointing losses, was surprisingly canned in late January 2024. Well, listen, at least the Bucks admitted they made a mistake rather than just continuing to play with an obviously crummy coach. Surely, the replacement will be excellent. Doc Rivers? God, even the basketball devil was horrified at such a move. The Bucks were lacking playoff success, so they hired Doc? Alright, well, to the surprise of no one, Milwaukee not only failed to improve after this move, but actively got worse. They were 30-13 under Griffin, and 19-20 with Doc. Outside of coaching, the biggest disappointment for this squad was Damian Lillard. The one superstar point guard went from dame time to lame time. His efficiency crumbled with his new team, his defense was poor, and his three-point shooting didn't hit at the same level as years past. There were even some times when he looked flat out washed on the court. The blockbuster deal expected to propel the Bucks back to the promised land ultimately set them on a downward spiral. They had the worst regular season in six years, just 49 games won. Everyone was unhappy. It was a letdown unlike any other, but still, the basketball devil was not satisfied. Do you remember all the suffering your enemies went through back in 2021 in order for you to achieve greatness? All the pain that was afflicted? It was going to come right back at you. In one of the final few games of the regular season against Boston, tragedy struck Giannis. On a routine inbounds play, he suffered a non-contact calf injury as he was simply walking up the court. It was a cartoonishly evil stroke of bad luck, and it sidelined him for the rest of the year. The Bucks were already on pace to lose early in the playoffs, and now they wouldn't even be given a fighting chance. But that wasn't enough. In Game 3 of the Pacers-Bucks Round 1 series, Damian Lillard strained his Achilles on a drive to the rim. It was the re-aggravating of an injury that had bothered him for weeks, and it would be the nail in the coffin for Milwaukee's season. Their fans had to sit and watch as their decaying team was burnt into flames in a round one exit. Since winning the finals in 2021, there have only been three playoff games in which both Giannis and Chris Middleton have played on the same court together. That's 20 out of 23 postseason games where either of these two have been hurt. It's a shocking stat, but as we know, this torture is all part of the deal that the Bucks agreed to. They made their bed, and now they must lie in it. The cold hard irony about it all is that injuries were required for them to win their title. And now, injuries are the reason they've been unable to compete for one since. No Kyrie Irving ankle injury, or no James Harden hamstring strain, and this team is done in round two. But no Chris Middleton MCL sprain, or no Giannis back injury, and we could very well be talking about the Bucks as two-time champs. That's the beauty of sports. Everything can change in an instant. And for the Bucks, in Game 1 of Round 1 of the 2021 playoffs, they abruptly agreed to a deal that changed their future forever. It was a pact that sold their soul for the 2021 championship. Anything that came after that iconic ring, well, it didn't matter to them. Because the Milwaukee Bucks got their shining moment once and for all. Now they must pay for it, indefinitely, and watch as the greatest player in their franchise's history waste away the rest of his career fighting for a lost cause. Kyrie did a tweet or an Instagram post or something recently where he was talking about uh, 
that they should have won the 2021 championship, right? Yeah, he sprained his ankle. He showed the clip. Did you see it? Yeah, I saw it. That was, that was interesting. Because I was a part of that 2021 championship. <laughs> and I have some feedback. It's um, a rebuttal for Kyrie. Y'all probably would have won that motherfucker. 